nuclear reactors that could potentially go out of control. That is a scary scenario, my friend. It's a very scary scenario. Thanks for that question. Let's go fill up to in Franklin, America. Indiana. They're all getting ready for the Super Bowl this weekend. Go ahead, Philip. That averages two per state. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I have a, actually a two-part question. I was uh, wondering about uh, naturally occurring EMPs, like, say, when the planets align, maybe uh, there'll be a big solar flare and EMPs will come out of the sun. Is it possible that it could affect the Earth? The, a sun X flare directly toward the planet would affect the big question is, William, do we know how big that X-flare needs to be in order to take out the grid? Uh, I don't know if anybody really that. knows that. Well, it, it, it's like a pinball game almost. It, if you picture the, the sun as an orange and the earth as a marble. All right, get this. This is a very uh, good analogy for what we're up against. The sun is an orange. The earth is a marble. Uh, it's actually a bigger difference than that. And we're a hundred yards apart. The sun is constantly shooting things off of it that completely can stop everything that works that we know to love called electricity. So it's a matter of time. Here it comes, ready? Orbiting a hundred yards away. You, you know what I mean with that is it's happening all the time. All the time, there are solar flares, CMEs, X flares, firing off from the sun. What's the probability it's going to hit that little marble, us, 100 yards out? Sooner or later, it will hit. We've had several near brushes. One of them, and we talked about the start of this program, only last week. A little bit more intensity, a little bit more of a direct hit, and you and I would not be sharing this conversation this evening. Do you get that, people? Last week, the CME that we got hit with, a little bit more powerful, which they've been, and a little bit more accurate, which they've also been, but luckily, the two uh, have never been done together. Well, since 1859, or the 1920s. But in any case, uh, just happened last week, a little more powerful, a little more direct hit, and instead of just a couple of communication problems here and there, or China, couple of months ago uh, everything is done and the bigger it is the more the planet gets hit with it and the more people that have to scramble to try to find uh, a way to feed their families and live agree with me now what happens to my radio show Sooner or later, it will hit. We've had several near brushes. One of them, and we talked about the start of this program, only last week. A little bit more intensity, a little bit more of a direct hit, and you and I would not be sharing this conversation this evening. The grid would be down. What happens to my radio show? There goes uh, my satellite transmission. Everything well, goes. Well, I hope you're. I hope you got a really good 401k that you've already withdrawn your funds out of. <laughs> because what good is money going to be? They're digits. Well, oh gosh, yeah, that's such a great that question. They control. What percentage of our money is actual real money versus electronic? Well, then who's going to accept it? Who cares? Commodities right. will be worth more than the money. Precisely. You know, stores won't even want to sell stuff. The people. They'll take it home themselves. Food, supplies, Precisely. Our whole economic aid, grid, the percentage water, of our money that's electronic transfer is things almost you all need of to it exist. now. What happens to all time. our magnetic stripped cards? <laughs> 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 well, the swipe machines that you got around they'll, they'll be gone anyway. They're gone anyhow. Yeah, doesn't matter. It's hard to imagine how much we rely on electrical power. Isn't it? Everything. Absolutely, yes. From uh, that 90% figure of 90% fatalities, people go, Bill, that sounds absolutely insane, scaremongering. But where does all your water come from? What happens to your water supply oh, and then the water town. purification? And then oh, waste it doesn't disposal work. within the first day. Within a week, clean water. Gone. The vast majority of us are going to be sick. Yep. What, what happens to your food supply? An average town has about two to three weeks of food total on hand 
much of a refrigerator. Have you ever seen stores in the Midwest when the, when the weather folks say the night before, we're going to have a blizzard tomorrow, they hit the stores, milk gone, bread gone, everything's gone. This would be a disaster. I'm laughing because living in the South... Well, you're crying, really. Yeah, well, when I lived in Maine, two feet of snow, no problem. Uh, we were used to it. But down here, two inches of snow, there's a mad panic. Where are you? And you're, uh, I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Okay. Up in the beautiful mountains uh, in Western And you're next to our buddy Joshua P. Warren. High ground. Unfortunately, I live near the coast. But high ground is uh, probably not a bad place to be. You know Josh? Josh? I've gone out on a lot of trips with Josh. Oh, really? Okay, like, cool. He's a very close friend of mine. We've known each other for 15 years. Good guy. He was just on with us last week. Guy. Let's go to uh, Elena in Glen Ellen, Illinois, on the wild card line. Hi, Elena. Hello. Good to have you with us. Actually, it's a great coincidence that I'm following up behind the gentleman before me because part of my question involved solar flares. I totally enjoyed your guest host that filled in and was talking about chemtrails yes. the other day. Robbie. Anyway, but when he was talking about some of the components being spewed, um, be one of them being aluminum-ish mm -hmm. type things, I kept thinking, hello, lightning rods in the air. Oh, yeah, little and ones. So, how would that affect the EMP effect either coming from well, out the, the, like the planet, of DNA. Here's the problem. like flare or EMP events they, from they, within? They don't, they don't stay in the atmosphere. They sprinkle them for the moment, and then really I think they fall down on us. I don't think there's anything, William, we can put up there to block this, is there? There is nothing. The only thing that's going to block it is, is what we talked about a bit earlier. A major foreign policy position that conveys, don't even start to think about it, because we will stop you. Yeah. But it has to be preemptive. And then secondly, reinforcing our infrastructure. Third, individual preparedness for your community and then up to the state and federal level in case the worst does happen. Let's go to George in Manhattan. He's up now. Hi, George. Go ahead. Hi, George and William. Boy, oh, boy, I could talk to you for six hours. <laughs> Wait, how about... Uh, how about no. two minutes? So, okay. Um, yeah, uh, a long time ago, I, I when I uh, just after Armstrong landed on the moon, I was so inspired, I uh, got a backpack and I hiked from New York City up to Canada. So I, I, I Appalachian Trail, Long Trail, you know, up here in the east. Cool. Anyway, uh, learned a lot about how to survive. It, I'm an e-foods guy, okay? I've got all your stuff here. Anyway, um, but I'm thinking, I live in Manhattan. I, yeah, yeah. How about uh, down in Carolina there, North Carolina, in the mountains, maybe I could become a neighbor. Uh, I want to build a little geodesic dome with solar panels and and uh, and uh, and get off the grid. Those know? could get cooked too, would they? What well, happens to stuff like that if you're not on the grid? Solar panels, whatever. Can you survive? What this gentleman is talking about is sometimes referred to as get out of dodge. Get out of dodge. And, That's right. And Again, I would refer him to a group uh, I mentioned earlier, the NOAA Project. They're based out of Charlotte. In fact, they do work with folks from cities who say, hey, look, do I have a get-out-of-dodge so place I can go to okay. if suddenly the radio comes on and says, you know, we're going to get hit by a major solar flare in 12 hours, so get ready for it. Uh, solar panels, other things, people are doing the research as to how to make them EMP-proof. No guarantee. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, we, the parameters of... Okay, can it survive 500 volts per square meter? But suppose the lay down is 10,000 volts per square meter. Oh, that's not so, right. So, calibrating to that is going to be a little bit difficult. That's but tough. If I lived in Manhattan, sir, I would be considering a get out of Dodge location and a geodesic dome somewhere, say up in the Catskills or wherever. I'd be a very wise choice. Whether we're talking about an atomic weapon or a solar flare, give me the percent. Give me the odds, William. 
on when you think and what you think could happen. What, how high? What are the odds? You can't say wow. Well. Solar flare 100 percent within our lifetime. 100 percent. It's already how been significant. Twice. Well, the closer you get In to the, the poles, the more significant years. it becomes. Uh, I'll, I'll give what some people might think of me is a little bit grim. I'd like to see a scenario where... Well, we could be up and running, though, with a solar flare in a matter of weeks, couldn't we? Or months? It could be infinitely worse because if we're hit by a major CME that lasts for 24 to 36 hours through one full rotation of the Earth, the entire planet is hit. Yeah, that's rather than just a certain side. So everybody is scrambling for spare parts yeah. afterwards and rebuild. It could be infinitely a nuke? Nuke? Indefinitely. Indefinitely into the future. Yeah. I cannot give you a percentage thing, maybe 25% this year or next. All I can say is, since the beginning of humanity, there has been war. Weapons, which we claim are going to end war, are inevitably used in the next one. It will happen someplace sooner or later. What has prevented Russia or China from putting one of these on a ship and doing it and having us scramble trying to figure out where it came from. I would say, again, mutual assured destruction because if the finger ever pointed back towards them directly, this would be like uh, a shuffle game where you got a gang of thugs that one...